Hello YouTube. I uh, had a really good time filming my uh, some of my aquariums the other day and I thought I'd include uh, this uh, electric catfish aquarium this morning and show uh, what uh, my electric catfish that I've had a little more than two years now uh, likes to do. He's about 13 inches long. I think he's full grown as much as he can grow in that tank my albino tinfoil barb. He just hangs out in this aquarium. It's my mellow giant, a little red-tailed, well, pretty good size red-tailed shark, and a single male uh, marbled angelfish. And I have a frontosa that's just peeking out of that little container there. I'm going to feed... Uh, uh, oh, also in this aquarium here are a little cherry shrimp. Uh, they say nothing can live with a electric catfish but uh, these little cherry shrimp I don't know if they show up that well there's one that you can see pretty good um, they reproduce quite well if you feed them and uh, I've got some flake food in the aquarium uh, they they do fine just eating uh, what algae they can find in flake food and then they reproduce I'm going to uh, I had recently had a leak in this aquarium and I had to repair it and uh, the uh, it's got a little container carp eggs here in a, a lid and I'm just going to take a pretty good sized chunk like that and uh, drop it into the aquarium like that and see if he wants to come he's got it showed little interest um, put this light cover down this is another aquarium lid that I repaired or not repaired but I that I made and he has been off his feed since I moved him around oh there he comes uh, gobble 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 see how he likes that bite of carp eggs. He's uh, sucking it up gently. He is really an incredible creature. I, In all the time I've had him I don't believe he's ever shocked me but the uh, lady at the fish store said that she put three of them into a fish net at one time when it was only like three or four inches long and it was a tremendous volt that uh, voltage that went through her arm. She had nested the uh, three catfish uh, simultaneously in the same net, and she said uh, it hurt for more than 15 minutes. Uh, I would assume that a fish this size would uh, be quite painful. Uh, I've read where they have 500 volts of electricity in them, but. Uh, I have an under gravel filter uh, system in this aquarium here. Just a single tube in the back. This is one that I sort of um, made. I've uh, put some plastic plants in the back here um, and just a little hide for the uh, catfish there. Um, this uh, tank here has a chocolate glucostomus down at the bottom here. And I'll get a few carp eggs here on my scissors and uh, we'll see if the angelfish <laughs> seems to really like that idea. Red-tailed shark swims in for a little bit. Now the uh, tinfoil barb usually gets more than his fair share of carp eggs. I'll try him one more time here and see if he uh, wants to come out get any oh is he gonna oh he almost took it right out of that angelfish's mouth he did <laughs> up close and personal and uh, that front toe size telling you about is really shy he's just barely sticking his uh, eye and his uh, first front part of his mouth out of his hide area there quite a shy fish and uh, 
This chocolate picosimus was given to me years and years ago by a, a friend that was getting out of the aquarium hobby. And uh, he's sort of scrawny looking, but I've had him more than uh, eight years. Seems like a long time for a picosimus to uh, live, but uh, they evidently, when the environment is right, uh, they do pretty good. I'm going to back up just a little bit and see if that frontosa will come out. See, there's just enough to see his eye, and that's it. The uh, two knife fish in this 50 gallon aquarium are hoping that I feed them some uh, carp eggs this morning, and then the angelfish up here, they're uh, in the feeding mode, and pretty soon the clown loaches are going to come out and want to have a little bit too. Yes, and this is uh, two uh, oops, electrical cords right in the middle. Um, those go down to my uh, snake. Uh, what would they be called? Snake aquariums? <laughs> snake containers. This one up here has got my uh, milk snake in it, and down here my uh, corn snake is hiding underneath the paper. And uh, the cords are to a small heating uh, system that I figured out uh, using a 7 watt night light. Oh look, I got another little baby uh, a multi-punctata catfish. He's just uh, like a half inch long. He's probably, well I don't know, maybe a month old. Cute little guy. I'll have to I want to uh, take some of these uh, multi-punctata out of here and put them into some of my other aquariums and uh, allow the parents here to uh, raise another bunch of uh, babies. Oh, look at this there. Right up here where the heater is, I have a uh, non-submersible heater and some of the catfish like to uh, get right up there where it's very, very warm for a little extra heat. I don't heat my aquariums excessively, but uh, this one is right around 78 degrees. But I bet up there where that catfish is, it's more like 90. <laughs> anyway, a little micro environment that they seem to enjoy. And this is uh, one of my other 55 gallon aquariums. Well, I uh, just wanted to include those other two aquariums. This one down here with my, as I used to call it, my big fish tank, but uh, and then my electric catfish tank. Very interesting fish. Um, they are not bred in captivity. Uh, they're just, uh, what you see is what you get. They don't do any uh, real interesting activities uh, and I don't have the uh, nerve to stick my hands into the tank and uh, harass him and get an electrical shock. Um, but when I picked him up in the fishnet yesterday and moved him from the tank in my fish room downstairs up here, uh, I was touching water that he was in and uh, he never shocked me at all. So I don't know if he just uh, keeps his electricity to himself or if I was sold a bill of goods and he's not actually an electric uh, catfish at all. <laughs> My wife is starting to suspect that he's not an electric catfish because I've never been shocked. 